Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. We're gonna to talk about growing hops in Arkansas and evaluating the quality of the hops that we're able to grow here. This is part of a project that is a collaborative effort among three researchers at the University of Arkansas. My name is Amanda McWirt and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture at the University of Arkansas. and also serve as the fruit and vegetable extension specialist based out of our Little Rock State Extension Office. Uh, you'll also hear from my colleague, Dr. Aaron Cato. He is also an assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture at the U of A and serves as the Extension Specialist for Horticulture Integrated Pest Management. And then our third colleague is Dr. Renee Threlfall. She's a research scientist in the Department of Food Science at the U of A. And the three of us together are working on this project to evaluate the feasibility of growing hops here in Arkansas. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what are hops and some of the specifics of how we can grow them here in the state. All right, so let me give you a little bit of background on hops. Hops do come from the family Cannabaceae, and you probably recognize this family name because there's another important crop that also comes from this family, which is cannabis or hemp. So hops and hemp do have some similar characteristics because they are coming from the same family. And one of those unique characteristics is that they have separate male and female plants. And that's not something that's unique to Cannabaceae, um, but it is shared between both hops and hemp. And in the case of hops, we are only growing the female plants. And that is because we want the female flower or the female hop cone. And that hop cone, of course, is the thing that we're going to use in brewing. Uh, and hop cones are used because they can impart either a bittering flavor or some kind of aromatic flavor to beer. Uh, in, in particular, a lot of the hops that we use today impart either a floral, fruity, or some kind of citric flavor to beer. Now, if you look there up in the right-hand corner, this picture I have there is showing you either a hop yard or a hop field or a hop garden, depending on what you want to call it. But it's just showing you how we grow hops. You know, so we have this really tall trellising structure we're growing uh, the hops binds, uh, which is the above ground stem straight up. And the reason that we do this is because hops are a very aggressively growing plant. Um, they can grow as much as 12 inches a day. And so we train the, the plants up in, in that way. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of how we train them and, and why we grow them that way in, in, later on in this presentation. So of course the reason we're interested in hops production is for the potential to use these hops in beer production. Of course, beer is one of the oldest and most widely consumed alcoholic drinks in the world. Uh, the primary ingredients are cereal grains, so anything from barley to wheat, corn, or even rice. Of course, in the delta of Arkansas, we grow a lot of rice that gets used in beer. But hops are another ingredient in beer. Of course, they're adding aroma and flavor and some preservative qualities like we previously discussed. Another thing that's happening here in Arkansas is that we really had an expansion in our craft brewing industry. Uh, the Arkansas Brewers Guild estimates that there's at least 39 breweries in Arkansas with more being added each day. And we're really interested in seeing can we grow hops here in Arkansas that could then be supplied to local Arkansas breweries to really create a product that is grown in Arkansas and brewed in Arkansas and provides a unique product to consumers. And so that was our interest of trying to evaluate what is the potential for growing hops here in the state of Arkansas. We do want to thank the Arkansas Department of Agriculture for their support of this project through specialty crop block funding. Without that funding, this research would not be possible. In this presentation, I'm going to first talk about how do we grow hops in Arkansas and some of the results that we have from our preliminary trials regarding what cultivars are doing well and how to fertilize hops. And then I'm going to transfer it over and let Aaron Cato talk about pest management. And then finally, Renee Threlfall is going to finish out the presentation talking about hop cone quality. So let's talk just briefly about some of more of the specifics of what a hops plant is. So here on the right hand side, you can see a picture of a hop vine, which is the stem of the hop plant that's growing um, around this piece of twine on the trellising system. On the upper right hand side, you can see kind of the range of different leaf types that are, are possible on a hops plant. Something that's kind of unique about hops is within the same plant, the leaf type or leaf shape can change quite a bit. And then there on the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see a hops plant as it's just starting to grow in the spring. And so this is something that we need to keep in mind is that hops plants are perennial. The crown or the massive roots that's down in the soil can live for many years. But out of that crown each year is going to emerge new growth. 
And this new growth is what we're going to train upwards on uh, the trellising system. And those stems that grow out of that perennial crown that's down in the soil are actually called bines. And so you may have heard me say that and, and thought maybe I was pronouncing it wrong. But a bine is, is unique in that it grows by wrapping itself clockwise around a structure to grow upwards, as opposed to a vine, which uses tendrils to attach itself onto something and grow. So we have hop vines and grape vines. So hops are vines with a B. Again, the plants can live for a really long time, anywhere from 10 to 25 years or longer. This is something important to keep in mind because this is a long-term investment if you're thinking about getting into a hop yard or any kind of hops production. Again, there are separate male and female plants. We are only growing the female plants in hops production because we want the female hop cone. We don't actually want any male plants present in the field because if there's any males present, we can get cross-pollination uh, and that will result in seeds being present in the female hop cones and that results in a reduction in quality. So this is what this looks like. Uh, we want those female flowers that are there on the left hand side that are being produced on female plants. Those female flowers are then going to develop into that hop cone. And that cone, of course, is what we're going to use in beer production. On the right hand side, you can see some images of what a male flower looks like. And so we do recommend to growers that they go out and check and make sure that they only have female plants in their uh, hop yard. I do want to note, though, that certain varieties like Cascade will sometimes still produce a few male flowers on a female plant. This generally isn't a big concern. It's just a, a genetic abnormality. Uh, those male flowers generally are sterile, so they're not going to cross-pollinate uh, or pollinate the female flower and result in any seeds. But of course, what we do want to see is a lot of female flowers that can then turn into a lot of hop cones. But hops are unique in that when they flower and how much they flower is dependent on several different factors. One of those factors is node number, which is basically just a measure of how many leaves there are on the stem. Um, and that's going to be somewhat a measurement of how much the, the hop vine has grown. They also flower based on temperature. Different varieties will have different timings of when they flower. But the big driver of when we see flowering start on hops is due to day length. And so they actually respond to, as the days get shorter, the plant will start to flower. So let's look at what that's gonna mean for us here in Arkansas. So here on this slide, we have a map of where hops are grown in the United States. So each one of those red dots indicates a place where hops are grown. And what you'll notice is that there's a lot of red dots between the 40th and the 50th parallel. So a lot of hops production in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, a little bit out in Washington and Oregon. And actually those industries are quite big now and also some production in New York. And the reason that we see uh, a lot of production in that more northern region is because they have a longer day length in the summer. So that allows a longer time for that hop plant to grow and to get to a certain number of nodes uh, and really establish itself before the day length starting to shorten and then that plant will respond and start to flower. And so generally we think of ideal hops production regions being somewhere around the 45th parallel, but of course hops production can be possible anywhere from the 35th to the 55th parallel. And that 45th parallel pretty much corresponds to where there are longer than 15 hour day lengths and that's going to result in the highest yields of, of hops. For us here in Arkansas and Little Rock, our longest day length is around 14 hours and 29 minutes, and that was occurred on June 20th in 2018. Um, and for Fayetteville, you know, being a little further north has slightly longer day lengths. Um, their longest day generally is around 14 hours and 36 minutes, and that occurred also on June 20th in 2018. So what we're going to see most likely in Arkansas is that we're going to have slightly lower yields uh, most likely because we don't have quite long enough day lengths. And so we're very likely going to see flowering uh, occurring right around the time that the node requirement is met and yield will be somewhat limited uh, due to having shorter day lengths. But of course we do know that we can grow hops here in Arkansas successfully. And so if we start to think about what is going to be required in order to establish a hop yard and start growing hops, there are some considerations uh, that you might want to keep in mind. I'm going to go over this very briefly today. If this is something you're really interested in, I would suggest you go check out our pub publication called Hops Production in Arkansas. This has a lot more detail and covers a lot more information than what I'm going to be able to talk about today. Of course, the big thing that we need to think about in establishing a hop yard is first going to be finding a site and building the trellis. 
Site selection is going to be really key. Hops do not like wet feet, so you want to have really good internal soil drainage. But you also want to think about the air movement in the, the site that you're looking at. So having good air movement really helps suppress diseases because leaves are going to dry out faster after uh, a rainfall. But you also don't want to have a site that is too prone to wind damage because of the height of the trellis. And this height of the trellis is something that we've been looking at a little bit in our study. Um, our trellis is 12 feet tall, and I think 12 foot is probably the minimum of what you would want to go with. Most commercial trellises are about 18 to 20 feet tall, and I think here in Arkansas about 16 feet is probably somewhere uh, uh, the height that, that would work really well for us. You can then buy pl plants. Uh, it's good to plan out early uh, when you're going to order plants and what kind of plants you're going to use because generally to place a large order uh, is going to require several months of advance notice to the nursery. We use plug plants but rhizomes are another option. You're also going to have to set up some drip irrigation. You can see that here in this picture on the left hand side. Uh, that black line of tubing running along the soil surface. In our trial, we're using herbicides for weed control. We have also evaluated using black plastic or landscape fabric, and we found that we it kept the plants too warm and the soil too warm, and the plants really seemed, seemed to struggle. So either herbicides or some kind of organic mulch would probably be a better option. We are currently evaluating the cost and economics of growing hops in Arkansas, and we hope to have a budget coming out in the fall or winter of this year of 2021. So keep an eye out for that. But one thing I do want to mention to you in getting started in hops production is that when we plant plants the first year, those plants are not going to uh, have optimum yields for probably two to three years and maybe even four to five years, depending on the cultivar. We planted originally in the fall of 2018 and did get a small harvest the following summer in 2019. Um, but again, check out that fact sheet for more information about trellis height and plant spacing. So this is what the, a year in the life of a hops plant looks like. In mid-May, we'll start to select some vines that we want to grow out and train to the trellising wires. The vines will actually emerge earlier in April, but generally we do a cutting back or a pruning around the beginning of May to remove those early vines that, that have come out because those tend to be um, sometimes hollow stemmed or more prone to diseases. And so around the beginning of May, we'll try and start to train vines uh, to the trellising system. Then through uh, mid-June and July, the vines will grow very rapidly. Again, you know, they can grow as much as 12 inches per day. Around early July, we do start to sometimes see the laterals start to form, and out at the ends of laterals, depending on the cultivar, is where we'll see flowers form. So we start to see the flowers happening um, in July through August, and then we're generally harvesting sometime between uh, early August and September, depending on the cultivar. And then after we harvest, we do cut the vines down, um, and then as fall approaches, the plant starts to go dormant uh, and will remove any above ground growth uh, in the winter. So again, I really recommend if this is something you're really interested in, in checking out that fact sheet because it has this really nice timeline uh, that walks through all of the different crop management and maintenance practices and the real specifics of why they're done and how they're done. But just a brief, just briefly, I would like to touch on um, each one of these things that does need to happen throughout the season. You know, we do want to try and apply our fertilizer in the late spring, early summer to coincide with when the plants are really actively growing. And so for us, we've been applying fertilizer every two weeks um, from mid-May through the end of June. Of course, we talked about spring pruning or spring cutbacks uh, about the beginning of May to select for uh, more vigorous and healthier vines that we're going to then train up those strings. Of course, training does take some time. Generally, once you get the vines started on the, the string, they do kind of train themselves up afterwards. But it's something that requires some timing and, and just monitoring to make sure that the vines are growing well up the strings and that they're spaced out well so that they're getting good sun exposure. One other thing that I'll comment on is that we have been recommending that growers strip the bottom 24 to 36 inches of the plant, and that just means that once the vines are really well established and growing up the, the strings, that to go in and remove those bottom leaves off the bottom two to three feet of the plant. And that just helps improve airflow through the canopy and also remove some of those lower leaves that are going to be more prone to um, being infected with disease due to soil splashing at the base of the plant. A major consideration for growers who are interested in getting into hops production is going to be variety selection. And there are a lot of different hops varieties out there. There's actually over 80 in commercial use around the world and there's always more in development. 
But in approaching this question, there's really kind of three considerations that we need to keep in mind. And the first consideration is going to be we want to make sure that we're growing hops cultivars that brewers want to brew with. And so, you know, being aware that certain hops may be used more for aroma, others might be used more for bittering. Some hops can be dual use, um, but there's also trends in what is popular. And you'll see this a lot in what is being highlighted on um, the labels of beers. Uh, breweries really like to highlight and put forward what, what cultivars they might be using. And so once we kind of get a list together of what might be popular or what brewers want to brew with, the next question then becomes what is going to be available for Arkansas growers to use? And unfortunately, this question is a little bit more complicated than it might seem. And this is because there's both public breeding programs and private breeding programs. Public breeding programs breed varieties that are available for use by anyone. And private breeding programs breed pri private cultivars, cultivars that require some kind of license or agreement in order to grow them. Unfortunately, some of the cultivars that are very popular, like Citra, Mosaic, and Galaxy, are all private. Um, but there's a lot of other good cultivars that get used a lot, like Cascade, Chinook, and Zeus, that are publicly available. So once we figure out what brewers want to brew with, what is going to be available for Arkansas growers, the next question becomes, what kind of cultivars of hops are going to grow well here in Arkansas? So in order to choose cultivars to trial here in Arkansas, we went and looked at what are some of the most popular cultivars that are currently being grown uh, across the United States. And here in this table, you can see the list of the top 10 hop varieties by acreage as grown in the United States in 2016. You do see that there's a mix of some publicly available cultivars and then some of those private cultivars that are only able to be grown if there's uh, a, some kind of agreement um, because they have a patent. Each cultivar that has a star next to it is one of the cultivars that we are including in this trial. So we are looking at Cascade, Centennial, Zeus, which is also sometimes called CTZ or Columbus Tomahawk Zeus. We're also looking at Nugget, Cashmere, and Crystal. Uh, Cashmere and Crystal are not on this list for the top 10 uh, by acreage, but those are two cultivars that are growing in popularity. So this is what our hops research trial looks like. This trial was planted at the University of Arkansas Fruit Research Station in Clarksville, Arkansas in October of 2018. We did use plug plants to establish this trial in October. So you can see a picture of what those plug plants look like there at the bottom. You can also see on the right hand side that basically what we did was we took a grape trellis and amended it and we added on some four by fours to make the grape trellis 12 feet tall to mimic more of the style of a really high trellis that hops should be grown on. Uh, our plant spacing is 30 inches between plants. Uh, we are valuing those six cultivars that I previously mentioned, and you can see listed there again on the right. And then we're also looking at three different fertility rates. So we're looking at kind of a low rate, a standard rate, and a high rate of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium of either 100, 150, or 200 pounds per acre. Um, that fertility is applied using a triple 13 fertilizer and it's applied uh, starting in mid-May and continuing in to the end of June. So let's look at some of the preliminary data that we have coming out of this trial so far. If you look at this graph on the right hand side, these are our yields from our 2020 harvest. And what you see is that Cascade and Zeus are the highest yielding cultivars we have in the trial. And they're also the two that have the best plant health and plant vigor. We've really seen that Centennial and Nugget have been two cultivars that have really struggled to establish. We did lose some plants in our original 2018 planting and we had to do some replacements. But even since then, those plants have still really been um, of much lower vigor and much lower yield. Cashmere was still continuing to monitor, see how it will do. Crystal is one um, also that, you know, is sort of a moderate yielder so far, has pretty good plant health and plant vigor, but just doesn't produce quite the same amount of cones as what we're seeing from Cascade and Zeus. Another interesting result we've seen thus far is the impact of fertility on the percentage of cones that are mature versus immature or damaged when we harvest. It's important to realize that we're going in and doing a single harvest. So we go in, cut the bind down, at the ground, remove it from the field, and pull all the hop cones off of it. When we do that, we do sort out the cones into cones that are perfectly mature, that are the right moisture level, and ideally are going to have the optimum alpha and beta acids, versus some cones that maybe were harvested a little too early and aren't quite um, to the dryness level that we would like. And then we also sort out any cones that might have insect damage or disease. 
And basically what we're seeing is, is that fertility can actually uh, impact um, that breakdown of mature, immature, and damaged. And we're seeing that our standard fertility rate of 150 pounds of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium per acre does result in the highest percentage of mature cones per plant and the lowest percentage of damaged cones per plant. So we're going to continue to evaluate this uh, as we move forward into our second, actually our third now, uh, harvest season. But right now we're, we're looking like the, the standard fertility rate is going to be the one that we would recommend. So based on a, our preliminary results, it does seem like cultivar selection is going to be key to maximizing yield and hops production in Arkansas. Cascade and Zeus seem to be doing really well. They have good plant health and survival and are yielding very well, uh, considering the age of the plants. Centennial and Nugget um, have by contrast, really struggled to establish and have a very limited cone yield per plant, and so we wouldn't currently recommend those to new growers who are getting started. And the fertility is going to be one that we're going to have to continue to monitor, but it does seem like we want to make sure that we're using a really standard rate of fertility so that we aren't negatively impacting any sort of measures of uh, hop cone immaturity when we are going in and doing our single harvest. But we're looking forward to sharing more results with you in the future.